Jeff Brown, uh, I want to thank you again for coming down to our offices this afternoon. How are you? Very good. Thanks for having me. And yes, and so I just wanted to kind of get started because you, you obviously made a name and a career for yourself early on, well, early on, well, the last, you know, 30 odd, semi odd years as chairman and CEO of Brown Superstores, a 12 store supermarket chain trading under the ShopRite and fresh grocery supermarket brands. And you've been specifically known for giving returning citizens an opportunity to work and as well as having stores in areas considered to be, you know, food deserts. Um, and though a businessman, at trade, I can see underlying interest from you in, in, in the philanthropy. Where, where did that come from initially? From my family, my dad in particular. Um, he loved people. My grandfather loved people. You know, I'm a fourth generation grocer. Mm -hmm. When I started my own business, my dad retired and I started my own grocery business, a ShopRite. And I mm -hmm. brought ShopRites to Philadelphia. At some point, like maybe 25 years ago, there was a meeting in which they were talking about food deserts and that people that live in food deserts would live 20 years less than people that had a full service, you know, healthy grocery store. And uh, I found that very compelling that we shouldn't subject uh, babies to live 20 years less because of the zip code. A lot of the other grocers didn't want, want to be involved in helping solve this problem, but I was very interested in solving it. And so Dwight, Dwight Evans and I talked and we sort of laid out the early idea of Pennsylvania Fresh Food Financing Initiative with Dwight and also the reinvestment fund was a very important partner. So Dwight and I were both anxious to show that this could be done, even though there's been a high failure rate. So that was the first project that was the guinea pig in Pennsylvania Fresh Food Financing Initiative. And we took a failed uh, store uh, by listening to the community. That was one of the key ingredients. Um, to learn about them, their heritage, their religion, um, their, you know, what they celebrate and how they eat. And we gave them a customized or we built a customized store to serve them. That was one part of the strategy. And the other part is if you serve people that, that, that have lower incomes, um, you have a, some difficulties. The people have difficulties and the stores that serve them have difficulties. And so, um, uh, we knew we needed some kind of intervention to uh, adjust the break even. And that's where Pennsylvania Fresh Food Financing uh, came in. And that was the first store to utilize that program that Dwight invented. And kind of going back to some of your philanthropic um, ideas behind, obviously, the, the, the grocery business, um, your stores have employed 700 plus returning citizens. In addition to groceries, you, you, your stores have offered on-site nutrition guidance, social work services, walk-in medical clinics. So given all these life-saving services that your stores have offered over the years and the good it does for people, then I'm sure you understand that you're doing it because obviously people don't have it or don't have access to it or are blocked from having access to it. So in regards to, in regards to leadership over the course of your career, what have you seen that's been missing that you think you can bring? When you pick someone, one of the most important things, what's their work history? What have they done in the past? Have they demonstrate caring for the community, for people in the work that they've done? Have they made a difference in the work that they've done? And I feel if you compare me on that basis, I really don't have any other opponents that have a track record like ours. Mm -hmm. You know, to solve food deserts, taking our city from one of the worst to one of the better, big cities in the country, our body of work around returning citizens and clearing criminal re records and criminal justice reform, and our work with black and brown businesses. Um, the PA 30 day fund, which some colleagues and I started to save black and brown businesses during the pandemic. And then later the small business incubator in which um, small local businesses come to our business and we have an incubator to help them get their businesses launched. And so when you look at that body of work, we really don't, I really don't have uh, an opponent that has that kind of work of making a difference for mm -hmm. people. How did you come to the conclusion that this would be, you know, the next step? Because a lot of the things I've done um, have been limited by the mayor mm -hmm. and the city council. And uh, they've, been, they've been a frustration to me over my career. Uh, they, they haven't allowed us to solve the kind of problems we've had in this city. I mean, in my view, the city's biggest problem is excessive structural poverty. And that has only deteriorated over my lifetime where there's more and more people living in that poverty. And, and I feel we, we need a bolder uh, mayor that, that is going to push through the politics of things that tend not to like changes. Um, to, they have their, their deals, right. their special interests and the things that 
that um, aren't necessarily helpful to the citizens. And so I think it's time we need an outsider to question things and to push harder to sort of turn this city around and give people a chance to escape poverty.